So we'll drain it, I think, to here, just above the grass. And the middle section here is closed. I'm so excited about this, guys. So I'll be curious to see how some sunlight affects this tank. Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Hope you're doing well. The plan for today is to start making some preparations for the new big tank that is coming very soon. Super excited about that. Uh, that tank will actually replace the two behind me. So I'm gonna have to move them to a different side of the living room. And when that is done, I wanna start building the cabinet for the new tank. Well, not building, assembling, I guess. Uh, I built this cabinet behind me with the Dutch tail tank. Um, it's leveled, but that's about all, <laughs> all of this. It's completely crooked and everything. So I want to start assembling the new, uh, the new stand for the new aquarium as well. So yeah, these two have got to move only like five meters or so. Uh, that Dutch tail tank, I just trimmed it last weekend. It's looking a little short right now, but this one should be easy to move because it's only a 36 liter tank. And when I drain all the water, I'll drain like 95% of the water. The, the shrimp and, and fish can stay in there. Uh, this one should be quite easy to move. Just need to make sure that the cabinet is leveled there as well because the floor is a little bit uneven here. And this one though is, yeah, different story. This one is 70 liters. And even if I drain 95% of the water, there's still a lot of heavy substrate in there. There's heavy rocks in there as well. Um, but I think it should be possible. And the only thing I'm wondering is if I'm going to move it with the cabinet or take it from the, take it out of the cabinet and move the cabinet first and then the tank. But let's just get started and we'll uh, we'll figure out on the way how we're gonna do everything. All right, so that's what the first one in this new spot. That was quite easy. Uh, the other one's gonna be next to it. So I just saved most of the water, actually all of the water. So now we can just fill it back up and start with the other one. Why is it that whenever you're siphoning out water, all the fish are like, oh wow, that looks great. Let's check it out what that hose is. Let's see what's on the other side of the hose. Uh, we're not done yet, but I thought I'll take a little break and show you guys how the aquarium looks without water. The fishness looks a little sad. Uh, we need to remove a little bit more water, still too much. But this is all I could save in buckets. So we'll drain it, I think, till here just above the grass. Still plenty for the fish to move around. And it's only gonna be for a few minutes until we move us to his new spot. So, yeah, let's continue. Alright, so now you guys can get an idea of how big the tank is going to be. It's not crazy big, but it's, it's definitely up a notch. Um, it's actually the next day. Yesterday we finished moving the, the two tanks across the other side of the living room and then called it a day. Today we're going to start assembling the new cabinet. Alright, so just to show you guys, these are the two tanks that we moved yesterday. The Dutch style was quite easy. It's light and uh, I could move it by myself. This one I needed some help with. 
it's just too heavy with all the uh, hardscape and everything. So I just drained most of the water. I first removed the tank from the cabinet, then moved the cabinet into position, put the tank back in place, and that was it. So I quite like them how they are in here in this in this corner. There is a window here. So I'll be curious to see how some sunlight affects this tank. The sun only comes here about when it's like four or five o'clock in the afternoon. And I find myself usually closing the curtains anyway around that time, just to block the sunlight. But it would be nice to see how, yeah, how this tank gets affected by sunlight. I've seen plenty of tanks that do well with sunlight, so let's just see. But let's continue with the cabinet. All right, so this is the cabinet that I bought. This is a stand for a Jewel Rio 300 or 350. I didn't buy a Jewel tank, just a stand. Um, but the tank that I bought has the exact, exact same footprint as this stand. So here you guys can see it. 121 centimeters by 51 centimeters. So this is the footprint of the tank. But let's unbox the, unbox the cabinet and let's set it up. I could have easily went for a 150 centimeter. But <laughs> I don't think the, the lady would have been happy with that. And I'm also on the, on the first floor of a building, so I don't think the, the floor would, would handle that kind of weight. 120 is perfect. Alright, I got everything out of the box. Well, this is not everything, of course. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven panels. That's quite a lot of panels. So, of course, we'll need a manual. And what I noticed here is that they have this video tutorial. So, I would definitely be watching that. Alright, scratch that manual, I'm just gonna do this my own way. This, this manual makes no sense whatsoever. It, it tells me to start with the doors, then attach the doors to the side panel, then attach the whole doors to the top panel, and then finish it off with the base layer. How does that make sense? You always start from the ground up, right? Or is it just me? I wanna start with the bo bottom, then attach the side panels, attach the top panel, and I'll finish with the doors or something. Makes no sense to me. All right guys, I'm officially exhausted now. I've been busy for two hours, probably was like five minutes in the video. The power of editing, but it's ready. It's looking great. It's quite big, huh? It looked so tiny when it was all packed up in the, in the box, but now it's all assembled. It's definitely huge. So yeah, one 120 centimeters from left to right, 50 centimeters front to back. I think there's a nice footprint. So there's three doors and the, both the left and the right side are open. And the middle section here is closed. 
So I'm not sure how I feel about that. Maybe I'll close these sides as well. Just get some extra uh, boards from the do-it-yourself store. But yeah, that's it guys. Loads of storage space for filters, CO2 systems. And talking about filters, why don't we already put the first piece of equipment for the new tank in this cabinet? Make it official. I'm so excited about this guys. What we have here is like the king of all external canister filters. This is the Oase Biomaster Thermo 850. This thing is a beast. I got this sponsor from Oase. So Oase, if you're watching, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I've actually never owned an Oase filter before. So I'm very curious to, to test this out, to unbox it and just to see what it's all about. I've always used the JBL external filters, but they don't have a heater, they don't have a pre-filter, and the Oase does have this. So why don't we just turn this into a quick Oase Biomaster unboxing? Why not? All right, let's take the filter out of the box. Oh, oh. yo. Look at the size of this thing. All right, so that's everything that comes in the box. We have the filter. I guess these are all the extra parts. So this is the Biomaster Thermo 850. So it's rated at 1550 liters per hour. So I'll put on the screen how much that is in gallons. You can use this on tanks at a maximum 850 liters. I think that's quite generous. I would say I'll cut that in half, use it on tanks maximum 400 liters. Uh, quiet operation, that's always good of course. The heater is rated at 400 watts. So again, if you measure one watt per liter, yeah, 400 liters would be a better number there. They give four years warranty. That's amazing. And you can use it as well on fresh as well as marine tanks. So that's super, super nice. Let's take a closer look at this filter because it's, it's really beautiful. I'm not saying that because it's sponsored. I just think it's a really good looking filter. And you can see that it's made from quality materials as well. So on the top here, we have the connection for the inflow and the outflow. Here we have the removable pre-filter and the blue thing is the, is the prime button. And behind that, we have the heater. So the heater is actually inside the filter. So I've never had a filter with a heater before, but I think it's amazing. We have a nice strong handle so we can pick it up if we need to clean it. And then on the back we have two power plugs, one for the actual filter and one for the heater. So let's, let's actually open it up and let's see what's inside the filter. I actually haven't read the manual yet, but I assume it's just a matter of opening these clips. And then there's four of them. So when all four of them are open, we should be able to yeah, lift it up. And that's it. So I'm very curious what is inside the filter. So let's take them out one by one. On top we have a small basket with some medium sized sponges. And we have a larger basket with more sponges. Then we have a basket with some media. I don't know what kind of media it is. Maybe they will find it out in the manual. And one more. So we have two baskets with media. Then we have four baskets with blue large sponges and we have one small one with medium sized sponges so here's my head for comparison look at the size of all those media baskets there's so much filter media in here i don't think i will ever have to clean this okay so to take the pre-filter out you first have to push these two levers all the way to the side then it's unlocked then you can lift it up and this is the pre-filter then if we just twist this 
this comes off and then we have a load more sponges so if we just take this out once a month and we just clean these sponges then we don't have to touch the filter or even open the filter whatsoever so i think that's really nice how Oasa did that makes it super easy and you can keep a constant flow rate if you just clean these sponges once in a while and then if you have your filter attached to the aquarium and all the hoses are attached you can just literally just press this and then the filter will fill itself with water and be ready in no time okay we have a load of tubing i believe that this is the 16 22 millimeter tubing so if you want to use lily pipes for example you will need 17 millimeter pipes um, we have a lot of different accessories different attachments We have a spray bar, if you'd like to use a spray bar, that's optional as well. This here, this is a uh, cap, if you do not want to use the heater for example. I have no idea why you would not want to use the heater, but or maybe the heater is broken and you want to remove it. You can close the gap with this cap. cap. No idea what this is. And then we just have a bunch of manuals, certificates. I'll read this when I have the time. Yeah, that's it. So a super nice filter guys. I'm really, really happy with this. I can't wait for the tank to be here so we can set this bad boy up and put it to work. Uh, let's actually put it in the cabinet, see if it fits, which I have no doubt it will. Quite heavy, man. Oh, look how this thing fits in here. It's huge, but there's plenty of space for it. I think that looks amazing. I get quite nerdy when it comes to technique. I think good technique behind an aquarium is, is just as great as the tank itself. Alright guys, so that's it for this first part of the new 120cm aquarium. I'm super excited, can't wait for the tank to be here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done this yet. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.